So John Lithgow plays a Superman villain in a movie seemingly about the history of Santa Claus, and he doesn't show up till halfway through? Okay, movie, whatever you say. Jamie? Yes? Let's go watch Santa Claus the movie. Welcome to another episode of Good Times, Great Movies. It's a holiday episode. Merry- Christmas time, Christmas time, <laughs> something Christmas time. Oh, I wish I had bells I could jingle, but I don't. So you'll have to imagine I'm jingling bells. Okay, no one okay. else can see your arms moving, but I can. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in Christmas bell noises. And I'll be Please. Like, oh, where did you get those? <laughs> They're my jingle bells from Santa Claus, of course. <laughs> Fantastic. It is your two little podcast elves, Jamie mm-hmm. Lorello and DP McCambridge, here to bring some Christmas 80s movie cheer. <laughs> but now we're specific to the holidays and the holiday of Christmas because yeah, we've already I covered Hanukkah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this will ever happen again where an episode of ours is scheduled to come out on Christmas Day. I don't know how every other week scheduling works. I don't know how many... Fridays there are the Christmas falls You're not on. the farmer's I, almanac. You don't know. No, I have no idea. I don't know how leap year works, so I have no idea. Listen, we had a problem knowing whether we were five or six days away from Christmas at the start of this whole conversation that probably no one will listen to because you've cut it out, but that's okay. Well, yeah, it is Christmas. Thank you for joining us. I do want to remind people, please go to our website, uh, goodtimesgreatmovies.com there's links to our merchandise links to facebook twitter instagram and links to our patreon and right now we not only have our december dune episode yeah but we have our episode that came out just yesterday christmas eve we always do a christmas eve one uh, where we talk about a holiday animated special yeah it was this a, one it was, was special. special it was special <laughs> Very special. Is it just claymation? Is it pretty much just songs? Yes. Do we talk about Andrew Dice Clay (laughs) way more than anything else? We do. And if that sounds like a Merry Christmas to you. That really does. (laughs) Like this close to, for some reason, doing a Ronald Reagan impression, but I don't go that far. No, because there's a boundary that's been set here on this podcast, Uh people. Yep. It's it's called the DC cab boundary. (laughs) It's a precedent that was set quite a while ago. But if you do want to check that out, find us on Patreon and uh, you get everything. You get all the back episodes for $5. So go check it out. Uh, Oh, and we're starting um, live videos. Yeah. Well, we're not in like action live. Right. Yeah. We're not like streaming this live. But for our patrons, every episode from now on. There will be a link uh, to our YouTube channel where we do that stuff. For where you the can patrons. see us. So it's so fun. Mm-hmm. But we are here talking about Santa Claus colon the movie. Yes. From 1985. Mm-hmm. A little mid-80s now, action. This is directed by, I am really going to mess this name up because okay. I don't know if it's Scandinavian mm-hmm. or Russian. Jino Svark. Mm-hmm. S Z V A R C. How would you say that? S. Say it. Spell it again. S Z V A R C. Shark. 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 Sh- yep. <laughs> Jino Shark. <laughs> and this is a director. Okay. So the the writer team that made this, I believe it's a husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Um, they bought the rights to Superman. Oh. In, the mid 70s. Okay. And they made and wrote all the Superman movies. Oh, like that Superman makes sense one through for Lithgow. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah. It, yeah, yes. that makes sense for his whole character and his crazy presentation of evil. Yeah. He's playing a Superman yeah. villain. Like, I, I mean, he also I flies can... into outer space. 
Yeah, not to give away. I everything, had to but, look yeah. on his IMDb to be like, is he the bad guy in Superman 4? Because it's been a while. He's not. But I felt like he's like, this will get me in good with them. So yeah. the next Superman movie, because I'm kind of surprised he hasn't been a Superman villain, unless I'm wrong and he has at some point. I don't think he, he has. He seems like a Superman He does villain, seem right? like a Superman villain, but yeah. instead he's a Santa Claus villain. And that's right. what you get. This. <laughs> it's just kind of like Superman, Santa Claus. They both wear red. Yeah, they and, fly you know, around and help people. Mm -hmm. and Help people one day a year. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Superman does, right? Yeah. He no. just naps the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. But this director did not direct all of those Superman movies. Mm -mm. Uh, this director, though, did direct Supergirl, which is another movie oh. these people made. And we covered so, Supergirl. Yeah. Yep. Previous episode, last Summer, not last summer, Two the summer before ago. that we did it live. Yeah. So hopefully we can do that live stuff at some point again. But I we're know. still in a pandemic, but it's Christmas, so let's yeah, be Yeah, so let's be happy. Let's meet up with Santa Claus the movie and find out all about, oh, this movie. Let's, we find out all about Santa. Like, we find out about the origins of Santa. Well, we start in one of my favorite places in one of these villages that are, like, oh, so okay. far off. <laughs> It's like, I didn't understand what we meant by favorite places because I was like, the North Pole? Well, Is that where these people live? No. Because Santa's able to, from these people's house, and we'll get into it, Santa's able to just ride his sleigh. I know he's not Santa. Let's call him Fred. Whatever. He's Claus. Uncle Claus. Yeah, but he's got a first name that we don't know. I think it's Claus. You, you think his first name's Claus? Yeah. And then the... The elderly elf names him, gives him a new first name yeah. and says, well, your first name is now your last name. Well, like, it's like St. Christopher, Santa Claus. He's a Santa, oh. not a saint. Wait, what? Like, you know how it's like St. Teresa and St., right. you know, like you say St. and then their name. St. is just what they are. So he's a Santa. Oh. Santa Claus. Is this true or are you just saying things? Didn't you... Did, did, Go ahead. Ask me if I learned this in elementary school. Yeah. Didn't you, <laughs> in didn't, Santa 101. Didn't the elves ever sit you down and tell you? Didn't you take a no, class? And, no. The elves never mm. did. Well, no. sad They also for you. didn't make me shitty wooden wagons that broke and or got run over by school buses for fun. <laughs> I loved the montage of all the kids' toys breaking while they're riding them and everything. <laughs> There's the one little boy. I'm like, why is he riding that wooden toy by himself near such a fast-moving school bus? <laughs> Anyway, like I'm not so ups upset about the toy breaking. I'm upset about the sharp turn that school bus took and the kid being alone riding that, that toy. That bus was flying. Yeah. That bus runs over a bike that could possibly have a kid on it. And the bus doesn't stop or anything. Just keeps on going. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I do love how it is a school bus. They could have used anything. They could have used any like, kind of oh, truck, yeah. a car, a pickup. Yeah. Yeah. This instrument of death uh, is one that kids ride around in. Yeah. So we are uh, time unknown. We're not sure what century. Well, we we're go through all the start. centuries for well, Santa right, no, once we'll, he becomes Santa. Yeah, we'll get Santa. there. Yeah, but it's a very long time ago. Long, long ago. <laughs> it appears that the entire village, or at least all the kids in this village, like stay in this one house mm -hmm. waiting for Mister Claus to arrive. Yes. Even though it's a very snowy, very blizzard. Is it Russia evening? Are they up in no, Russia? No, they're in the North Pole. <laughs> he finds that elf village. They're not that far from it. But that's the guiding star that takes him to the North Pole. That's not. And, so, and him passing okay. out from frostbite that takes him to the North Pole. All right. So, okay. So he's in Russia. Let's just, let's, let's right. just make it. He's in a very movie. cold place. Very northern cold place. It's not quite the North Pole, though. We're going to call it Scandinavia. All right. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. Claws. Yeah. He seems like he could be Norwegian yeah. or yeah. something like that. They do. They all uh, do. Right. They all do. <laughs> Dudley Moore with that accent. No, the, all Norwegian. the village people, all the people that live in. Because there's there's kids, but then there's also some adults that are just cold and miserable because you all have to. <laughs> I was like, that must be terrible if they're all living in that like one big. It's like a big cottage, but not even. It's like there's a no giant rooms. room. Yes. It, yeah. It's just a single room with mm -hmm. a big fire in the middle of it. And you're right, everybody's miserable, but you're right, they're all like Swedish chef in their <laughs> accents. <accents. laughs> Swedish chef. Right. But then the miracle comes. comes, everybody, who they're waiting for. Yeah. And um, 
He, is he in his sleigh? He is in his sleigh. That's how they get around out there, right? He's in his sleigh. Yeah. He has two reindeer, mm -hmm. and his adorable wife mm -hmm. is with him, and he's there to drop off just carved, like little wooden carved statues. These kids stuff to all freak these kids. out for these little these carved These kids are statues. losing their minds that they get carved wood from this guy. P.S. Fast forward. When he gives the carved statue to Joey, the homeless kid, I'm like, this kid's got to look at him like, what do you want me to I don't have a home. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this carved? But then Joey? He pulls it out of his pocket later and is like, I just carry this with me everywhere. Yeah. Joey was year. needlessly excited and <laughs> way too excited to get this. Like, I expected him to look at it and go, Who is this? <laughs> what is. What am I supposed to but do? But I like it. This? When Deadly Moore looks at it, he's like, Oh, it's me. Oh, Santa it's, loves me. Yeah. I like how Santa absent mindedly carved this <laughs> statue of that elf and he isn't even aware of no, it until his it wife's was... like, you know that looks a lot like Dudley Moore, right? He's like, what are you talking about? Well, these, he so he carves these figurines, like you said, for these right. children of the village. They call them something. They call them little... Little... little Vin Vendigums? Vend Vendigums? <laughs> little Vendigums. <laughs> Yeah, because the old lady, the old lady at the beginning is like, there's these creepy things that live in caves oh, yeah. and they're little <clears throat> and they're called Vendigums. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, whatever this is. And that's what Santa gives them. Sorry, Claus gives them these little statues. Right. And I like how there's this crazy blizzard outside. And he's like, well, you know what? The other village is only 80 miles away. Let's hop back in this sleigh. We can be there in a few hours. Yeah. His wife's like, you maniac, let's not yeah. do this. She's like, come on, they have a fire here. They're pouring slop into a bowl. We can just eat. But he's a determined man. This is what he does. They don't, We come to find out they don't have any kids. Um, we don't know if it's because Mrs. Claus can't conceive or it's a Mr. Claus thing. We don't get into those kind of details. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> we don't go to the doctors at all <laughs> no. in this movie. <laughs> We don't touch that, but it's horrible conditions out. It's just, it's a blizzard and it's freezing and it's, he works his little poor reindeer. He's like, come on, hustle. And they are just, I felt so bad for them. They, first of all, the reindeer look great too. At the beginning of this movie, I wrote in my notes, I was like, are we going to watch two reindeer die to start this yes. movie? And we kind of do. Like the reindeer work themselves to death. They basically collapse. Yeah. And even then, he's, like, pulling on their chin, and he's yes. like, come like, on. Give them a rest, I know. To like, calm down. And I like how he walks to the front. Mm -hmm. He's literally five feet away from Mrs. Claus at this point. And she's back there, also freezing to death, and she's like, where did you go? Where <laughs> are you? Please help me. And he comes back, and they all just kind of, like, drift off to sleepy death town yeah. like it's well, such yeah, a she, weird way to start this movie she starts to pass out and he's trying to shake her awake yes. like no don't leave me now that the the reindeer have passed out in the snow there's just it's becoming like a brick of snow in front of them yeah. and yeah he just she passes out on his shoulder he passes out onto her and yeah we think we're starting this movie with claw's death Reindeer death, for sure. I mean, there's a way to look at this, which is everything we're seeing right now is, like, the death dream of this Santa. Like, Oh, yeah? That's a, that's a horrible way to look at this movie. But you could, in a weird way, I was watching this at one point going, did he really die? This is yeah. all, like, a dream in his mind that he'd become this huge hero at some point. But that's not what happens because the reindeer are the first ones to wake up. Yeah. They see this bright light, this... This beautiful Christmas star. Yeah, it's a, it's like a Christmas star that shines a light, mm -hmm. and the light kind of is, you know, tree, it's beamy. It's... Christmas tree in shape. Yes. Or let's call it a triangle. <laughs> and, <laughs> and from this comes all of these Vanda Gumps. Here come the Vanda Gumps. He, even Santa Claus is like, oh my God, look at you, Vanda Gumps. And they're like, you know what, buddy? We're elves. Yeah. Okay. If let's you could just call keep us it elves, simple. that would be great. Right. Yeah. Vandegums kind of gets caught in your throat a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vandegums is just the racist term that you guys made up for us. <laughs> we can call each other Vandegums. You cannot. There you go. We're you elves go. to you, okay? Yeah. But yeah, they, they they come out of the light and they walk to Santa. She He wakes up uh, Mrs. Claus. The deer, reindeer come awake and they're, they're, they kind of welcome him. They've been, they say, we've been waiting for you. We've been yeah. waiting for you. 
So it's like this crazy prophecy that I guess at some point some bearded man will come and then Christmas. Because that's the question I have is Christmas. (laughs) Well, the the question I have, because they reveal like this elf village, this elf town that's like obscured by the northern lights or whatever. But I was like, well, how long have you been there? And well, look at the size of doing. Look at the size of the master elf's beard. They've what? been learning yep. how to be elves. Yeah. So all of a sudden, beyond the the they because they don't ex- seem to age just like Santa either. Or like, the kids. I mean, they come. He comes back a year later, and Cornelius, which is a terrible name for a little girl. They couldn't name that little girl something else. <laughs> Did you want them to draw a mustache on that kid's face? <laughs> like Santa, I've been growing it out this year. <laughs> I want them to at least have a different haircut. They look exactly the same. But anyway. Um, they look exactly the same. I, I do love it how Santa's like, oh, you're homeless. That must be a drag. Hey, I'll see you next year, yeah. kid. Yeah. Oh, and I'll send a wooden toy for you. Yeah. Chances are, Santa, you won't see him next year. Hey, did you see how cold it gets? It gets pretty cold, but he survives. He's a survivor, that Joey. So they reveal the Chris. They reveal with this light and the elves and the you're exactly what we're looking for claws. Um, like it reveals this like like the castle almost like the whole home of Santa Claus, the workshop, the home. This was all of this part of the movie was magic to me because they Santa rides in on his sleigh. He's like, all right, well let's yeah. go, and he rides through the snow into this workshop first. And we get to see the workings. Like you said, who knows how long the elves have been here working on this. And It's an elaborate set. Very, like yes. Everything is wooden and it's huge, too, because they pan around and it's just, you see the entirety of this workshop and just how big and open it is. And you already, Dudley Moore, he's not the head elf. He's just, he's just a regular but elf. But he takes care of the reindeer, right? He's got a... Yeah, his ascension from reindeer caregiver, I guess, to <laughs> assistant makes no sense to me. It's because of I all like the it. ideas. He's a chatty well, guy no, with lots oh, of no, ideas. No, I understand. Yeah. And you get it right off the bat because when they walk in, Mrs. Claus is like, hmm, this is a really big place. Doesn't it get cold in here? And Dudley Moore's like, yeah, I've been telling them we need to heat this place with pipes. And they all look at him like, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> And I love it. He says it over pipes. Yeah, you know, pipes. Yeah, you know, pipes. You can just pump in heat through the pipes. And by that time, everybody's walking away to another yeah, spot. Yeah, because in this they, they, that's what they do to. I forget Dudley's elf name because I call him Dudley the whole time. It's Patch. Patch. His name is Patch. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems like Patch is just the chatty caddy with a lot of energy and a lot of ideas in the group. Yes. Um, but he's never been given the position to get these things done. He's very, all of the elves are very caring, compassionate, nice elves. There's not a jerk amongst them that I could see. They're all males, though. Oh, right. No, there are no female elves yeah. at all. No. I don't feel comfortable with this girl being part of this at the end of this yeah, movie. Well, I don't in store feel comfortable with them kidnapping those two children at the I end. I don't feel comfortable story. at all. I was like, if you want to kidnap a homeless child, I get it. First of all, don't kidnap homeless children, anybody. But if Santa does it, fine. You can probably give this kid a better home. I'm like, what? She has a family. I mean, they do go out of their way to be like, oh, your parents, they're totally dead zoes. Yeah. So I guess that's to make us feel better at the end when she's just kidnapped by Santa. And yeah, when she's just... That was so surprising at the end of this where she's like, where am I going to sleep? And nobody goes, I'm sorry, we have to take you home. The one elf is just like, I guess I'm your school teacher now. Yeah. Bump, bump, bump. Yep. The end. Yep. Because they're good. I wonder, I didn't think about this because obviously there's no seat. But what if Joey is soon to become, not soon, but in years now when Santa retires, Joey is the next. He fills in. Yeah. Okay. Santa Claus too. Yeah. Okay. With the homeless I, kid become like maybe that's Santa, for Santa's original story is he's this childless toy maker from this small village who makes wooden toys for children, and fast forward, Santa of the future used to be homeless in the streets of New York City and was taken in by Santa. Yeah, I and that's the Santa movie I, don't know I how want. Time to see. works like. It seems like Santa's just going to be Santa forever. And are these children going to be children now forever? Are they going to age? I don't know now that they're at the North Pole. Because that's something Santa, I think the elves address that right away. That Santa, just like the elves, is not going to age. So um, 
They live forever. I like the idea that perhaps to never age, you first have to freeze to death and die. And I want I want Sandra to explain that to those kids. Well, <laughs> yeah. we do have to sacrifice you if you want first, to live forever. you have to spend all of January outside. And... Right, yes. We'll thaw you out. Yeah. It'll be fine. You'll be good. Look at me. Right. I'm thousands of years old. Right? Um, Dudley Moore, like we said, he's in charge of these reindeer. And I think Dudley Moore comforting these reindeer puppets so is one of my sweet. favorite So sweet. I agree. <laughs> these, these reindeer puppets... We're great. They're like really the good. The puppetry yeah. mm-hmm. on these is fantastic. One reindeer, though, constantly eyes just like googly eyes rolling around this thing's head. <laughs> okay. That was a little disturbing. The one that kept like I think that was Dasher, if if I got their names all right. It was hard to keep them all straight because it's all his deer. Except obviously, this is not called Rudolph, so there's no Rudolph in this movie. No, there's never. Other than the song, there's never Rudolph, which always not makes me upset but i'm just like why can't he just be built into these movies like why is it <laughs> yeah he's just we don't have to make a big deal out of him if the movie's not about him but we have to know that the leader is rudolph because of the light on his nose but he's he's not there's no rudolph no but but they do have a very tendful very loving um dudley elf who takes yes. care of them and one of the elves that santa brought with him is a little bit um more reserved uh, Dudley even is like, oh, you know, sometimes it takes a minute to adjust. It's a new place. And he gently feeds them this this kind of magical hay and magical reindeer food. There's a um, lot of <clears throat> sparkly glitter. dust in mm-hmm. this movie. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, oh, there's a... I didn't write them all down. There's a lot. This movie's front-loaded with elf puns. Oh, yeah. At one yeah. point, Dudley Moore's like... He just needs a little elf control. I'm like, okay, all right, stop it. Stop it, movie. Stop it. And the movie does stop it. It's like I yelled stop it at the movie. And the movie was like, all right, all right, all right, 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 I get it. Right. I get it. It's like, that's enough. I think we're done here. We literally have to go around to every reindeer and discuss oh, yeah. like, their personality traits yeah. and everything. What about, is it I mean, this when they brush the one's hair and they show it to him in the background? Or that's later before the No, flight? that's that's later when they're yeah. getting ready for yeah. the night. I do like how they have two mirrors yeah, so that he can see cute. how the back of his head looks. Yeah. No, this is where he's like, this one's called Dasher. Oh, he just wants to run all day long. The reindeer's just like running around in circles and everything. Oh, this one's Prancer. He's a little bit sad right now because somebody ate his food. Like, we get backstories on all these. Like, we said early, and we were talking for patrons, how this is multiple movies in one. And we talked about how this first movie, which is the history of Santa Claus, is interesting because I kind of loved Me too. them being like, well, this is where all this stuff came from. Yep. We just, I guess, kidnapped all these reindeer, and we've been waiting for you to show yep. up, and here's what their personalities are like, and this one has googly eyes for some reason. <laughs> and now your two reindeer, who we rescued from death, are going to be part of this right, team. Right, they're the perfect, exactly, addition to this wonderful team we've been raising. Um, I wanted to make mention, because you were talking about the set, and we might have gotten back to it anyway, and how beautiful and elaborate the workshop is and everything. And did you see how cute where Santa and Mrs. Claus sleep is? It's like this little cubby. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And Santa has to hop down from it at one point because it's like up, tucked away. And it's it's just adorable. Their whole little, when they're in their little Santa house, it's just it feels like this is where Santa lives. It, it feels very Christmassy and 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 natural. Yeah. And and you've seen enough movies like that stupid Tim Allen movie where he's Santa and then he oh, goes to the right. North Pole and it's like weird and technologically advanced and stuff and I'm like well that's not what you know no, I know this we is all don't simple... want wooden toys anymore right right yeah it does feel comfy it feels cozy it feels like this is a movie for children mm-hmm. and at this point it feels at like a movie point, that knows it's, what it's doing yes yes and this exactly you watch the first 30 minutes and you're like I'm learning all about where Christmas comes from and how and you see he's just it's also so the elves are taking him on this tour and showing them all the workings of their of their workshop and the introducing them to the reindeer and Santa is just in awe. He's like this is wonderful. This is the best and they're singing and their elves are so happy. When they're all like yeah. doing work to the beat of a song that yeah. I guess is playing in their heads or perhaps mm-hmm. being pumped throughout this workshop. Yeah, it's super fun. I also thought something was funny about how when the elves are coming to them and they're in their death sleigh and, you know, just waking up out of this, how 
when they're talking about how they're elves or whatever, Santa's wife, Mrs. Claus, is like, oh, the little people. And time and time again, I looked and I was like, Dudley Moore's like five inches shorter than Santa. Like, these are not little people. No, they don't or, make them little. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not until we see the massive John Lithgow where I'm like, oh, this is the, re- like, now Dudley Moore looks like a tiny, tiny man. Right. But with all this elf stuff, I was like, Santa's not much bigger than these guys. And Mrs. Claus is smaller than him. So these should not be called little people, I don't think. That was my big problem with the movie. Okay, there we go. That's your grievance. Air it out. Okay. It's weird that they're doing all this and they might not know for what Well, and he questions it. I think it's after he meets the reindeer where where he's like, Santa's like, this is great, but what's this all for? And Dudley's like, you'll see. You'll see. You just hold on and you'll see. Which, yeah. and You'll then, see, apparently tonight was Christmas, right. but you know what? In 365 days, all will be revealed you, And you got to be ready. You're going to be on the ready. Uh, when you were talking about Mrs. Claus, she kind of jumps right in. She's helping them make their food. She's like rearranged, helping them with their recipes yeah. and adding stuff to their big vat of soup that they make. And then, yeah, she steps in and is altering because uh, I guess Santa's original suit was green. But as it turns out, green's not a great color um, for this Santa. Washes them out. Washes them out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get to the. I want to get to the part where they read the poem and Santa oh, is so, so goddamn good. offended by this. He's like, read I that, that part again. Hilarious. And I love how the elf's like, well, what? What part about the job? Uh, uh, yeah. What part? Uh, your twinkling eyes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're really into your eyes a lot. No, the part about how I'm a bit fat yeah. slob. Like, is that really what they think of me? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Uh, and I love all their reactions. It's the cookies. It's the cookies. It's the yeah. cookies. <laughs> yeah. Really, Mrs. Claus is like, you do eat a lot of cookies. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't blame the guy for writing that in this poem. I mean, and it's a jolly belly, those shakes with a bowl full of jelly. Um, anyway. So uh, now I guess it's Christmas Eve or Christmas. Like the this is the first like actual legit Christmas. Yes. Because now Burgess Meredith walks in with a beard that has to be <laughs> held by two other elves. It's amazing. Well, another light shines. The elves... Uh, there's some amazing dancing. It's like polka music, and the and Santa's dancing, and the Mrs. Claus is dancing. It's a huge celebration because it's Christmas night, and they have to wait till just the right time in the sky. And they open up the ceiling of the workshop, and this right. beaming oh, light yeah. shines in. And then, yes, Mick comes walking in. <laughs> Mick. <laughs> You're going to uh, be Santa Claus. You got it, kid. kid. Um <laughs> But yeah, he's got this long ass beard that needs to be carried. He's this regal looking. He looks like a wizard from Lord of the Rings. He's just, um, but an elf. Um, yeah, he comes walking in and and kind of proclaims that that this is the prophecy yeah. that this is the chosen one and he's finally here. And like you said, at first the they're, Santa's like what, and then he's like, oh, of course. Yes. Oh, of course, Santa. Oh, that's why you're making all those toys. That's why I'm dressed like this. I get it now. It's so weird. And this is the only scene Burgess Meredith is is in of this entire movie. Like He disappears. I assume they said cut and he turned around and put out his hand and was like, what do we say? 150 grand? Just give me the money. And then he walked off set. Like, it it is so weird. He does a great job, though. Oh, it's. It's fine. He does look like he should be in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He really does. <laughs> but you wonder, was he the Santa before? Like, that's what I was There was like, no Santa before. That's uh, the thing. Is they, they had to find this to guy. They needed somebody to do this. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's my question is, what have they been doing? Just, Just making waiting toys for in him. advance? Caring for reindeer? I guess. Yeah, getting their but groove anyway, on. Getting their elf groove on. The uh, reindeer, they eat magical bowls filled with flight mm-hmm. sparkles. Mm-hmm. And they're off. And Donner's afraid of heights. I think his eyes are googly. Oh, yeah, he's the googly eye. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they really do take off. And, you know, it's like, hey, you're going to fly around the world. I also like how certain things are explained and other things are not. How the elves are like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't. Time doesn't work that way. You can't fly all around the world. Time is like going to follow you. So it's almost like time stops when he's doing stuff or whatever. You can. 
Yeah. Because he's magic. Because he's... So, yeah, because he's like, there's no way I can do all of this. And then they're like, no, you don't get it. You're, you are magic. We, we don't get any funny scenes of him, which is in all sorts of Santa movies. Oh, like, practicing being... Oh, yeah. I fell down a chimney and stuff because it's just magic. It's like he turns into a little thing of sparkles and then... It, you know, zips into the house and then yeah, sparkles zip him in, sparkles zip him out. Right. Um, there's no training period for him. He's just this was his destiny, right? And back then, I don't know when they're starting this, but there weren't all that many people in the world, or nearly as many as are now. So you know, he's able to sort of figure it out as he's going. Right. I'm assuming, and we do but get where is... they're figuring it out. Go ahead, go ahead. We get the time passage montage. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Which is just like the seventh century. Oh, the sixteenth century, uh-huh. and so on. And you get these kids just opening various toys throughout the centuries, which I think is kind of fun. Well, then we get to where um, we get to some of the rules they they have to start setting in place. Right? We we see these little montages of the different children opening the presents and Santa doing his magic and just naturally being able to do it um and then we see this little girl and her brother i guess fighting what with is the- <laughs> what is this this we have to watch a kid torture a cat i was yeah. like what is this part of this movie and then it kind of goes away yeah well like, it's, it's not really so the kids in the earlier montages the kids begin writing letters to santa that's part of it as we know oh, as you write letters and so i don't i don't want to interrupt you mm. but this the guy who reads these letters, this interaction I found hilarious because Santa like opens the door and it made me think that this elf was like masturbating or something because <laughs> his reaction is like, I'm just uh, in here um, reviewing uh, the kids' letters. Yeah. I'm just uh, reading and writing and, and uh, reading and writing. And I expected <laughs> Santa to be like, I didn't ask for your life story, dude. It's fine. Because it's this elf is unreasonably... His reaction's crazy to Santa just being like, what were you uh, doing in this room alone? <laughs> but yeah, the letters come in through Santa's chimney. And they just get whisked in. You don't even have to mm-hmm. send them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't, you know, this was back. There was no post office when this started, I guess. I don't know. Post office. Been, it's been the magic of Santa. While. Yeah. It's like the tooth letters fairy, yeah. Are, yeah, letters are taken away, mm-hmm. sent to the North Pole, down the chimney, and then these guys have to review them. Right. And one of these letters come from, I don't even think we know her name, but she's got an awful brother who likes to torture her cat. And she lets Santa know, like, he's really hurting my cat. And he's really not a good. And so it is decided there should be a naughty list. Yes. Because Mrs. Claus is like, he should not get a toy. And Santa's like, what do you mean every kid should get a toy? And she's like, "Mm, not the naughty (laughs) ones. "Uh -uh, I'm in charge of this shit now, Santa. You're just giving stuff out exactly. for free Come on, these this terrible kids. These kids being a brat, torturing a little cat. Yeah. I don't think we can explain how bizarre this scene is. Like, it's this brother and sister in, like, a Victorian yeah. mansion. And the brother just has this cat. <laughs> he just keeps pulling it. And they focus on the girl who has this hundred-yard death stare. And it's just <laughs> nothing. And then she sent a letter like, my brother's a creep. I thought he was going to murder my cat. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know what to do about this. And, yeah, that's when there's a list. And I do like how Santa's like, mm, you better make sure, uh, you know, you get that list right. I'll be checking it That's twice. right. That's <laughs> like, right. Well, like, all right. Okay. Laying down the law. The guy who just wanted to give gifts to everybody is yeah, now suddenly yeah. like, you better not screw up that list, you dumbass. Exactly. Elf. Now that we got some naughties, I want to make sure they're mm-hmm. accurate, right? This is when they read the poem, right? <laughs> One of Santa's lines is, is that how they think I look? (laughs) Just, I love it. He's such a perfect Santa. He does such a great job as like. Oh, he's he's... great. Yes. And and he seems genuinely offended by this. And I was like, are we now going to go down a road where he's on a diet and stuff? They do it for a second. It looks like he's eating. They do it for one second where he's eating a carrot. And he looks miserable. And his wife's like, "Mm, whatever. Yeah. And he looks miserable. And the whole time I was like, well, he shouldn't be because Santa, that's, Santa is a jolly man. But, but yeah, that's part of it is like, 
you're really getting popular, Santa. They're even writing poems about you. Like they're writing you letters and they're writing you poems. Now this has gone on for centuries, as we said. Oh, and while yeah. Santa's eating healthy, it's not the lack of nutrients he's getting. It's it's he's getting sleepy. He's falling asleep in his soup. So Mrs. Claus he falls again. asleep just like Yentl's father, just sitting yeah. up, just falls asleep. <laughs> like and I have a question about this because his wife's like, you know what? You need to take on an assistant. Yeah. But later we see the assistant. I, I don't, the assistant isn't doing anything to change Santa's duties. Like he's still out on Christmas Eve doing everything. So what is the assistant doing? Santa's not making the toys, right? That's always the elf. So I just don't understand what the assistant is doing to help Santa. Well, when he takes the job, the assistant, right? Cause it's a company. So, so yeah, they decide he needs an assistant and you're right. The day of, there's no assistant in the sleigh with him helping him give out the toys or sort them or anything. Because he's exhausted because he just got back from delivering gifts. I'm like, an assistant's not helping you there. Santa. No. Also, if you're giving joy rides to every homeless kid right, on the planet, maybe. no wonder you're exhausted. <laughs> this is going to take forever. I like how like he's never heard of a homeless kid before when he meets... I'm like, what kind of glimpse of the world are you in here? But again, he's filled with joy and kindness and love, and he's Santa, so he doesn't want to see the bad stuff of also, the world. Also, maybe that's why he's not overly concerned. He might not know what homeless yeah. is, because <laughs> this kid's like, I don't have a home, and he's like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, you just hang on this rooftop. I'll see you next year, man. <laughs> he's okay. like, yeah, I died in the freezing cold snowstorm. It's fine. <laughs> Things are only going to turn up for you. That's oh, you how don't have a me. home. At least you didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. I'll see you next year. At least you, you don't know? live in a home huddled all together like the old villagers I used to know. <laughs> yeah. So as we get through the ages, we're in. We get to kind of fast forward to modern times, right? We're in the city. Is it modern <clears throat> times? I, I, I guess. Oh wait, yeah. I guess it is yeah. modern times. Okay. Nothing about the relationship between these two characters, these children, make me think it's modern times. This girl could have been living, you know, in like the 19th century. Oh, yeah, because she's got this big fancy apartment. It's like a New York apartment, I guess, she lives in. I don't know. Yeah, but I guess when we get to John Lithgow, we do realize it's modern mm -hmm. times. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was dumb of me to even ask. Oh. The movie that I had become accustomed to and the movie that, that I was That you're falling really in love with, yes, yes. <laughs> completely changes because suddenly we see some, like, leather-clad hoodlum kids stealing food out of a garbage yeah. and eating it. Uh, like, it almost felt like someone changed the channel on Yeah, me. like it switched. Well, and we see another Santa. We see, a like, a Salvation oh, Army Santa. Santa. Yeah, boozing it out of the, out of the uh, what is it, donation... Yeah, Bucket it's like a whatever. donation box. It's yeah. almost like just a cardboard box with a slit in the top mm -hmm. where he pulls the money out and then pulls booze in a bag out, which I thought was pretty funny. And we meet a little rich girl. With the worst name. The worst name. Oh, what's her name? Cornelia. Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I guess because, I don't know. She's Cornelia. Cor oh, Cornelia. It's not even Cordelia? No, not I that think that's any better. I think it's Cornelia. I think it's a terrible Ooh. name, and you can't even shorten that because you'd call her Neil, and or that's corn, not good. corny. I don't know. I guess she's meant to. It's a good elf name, so maybe she's just. It's meant a to great elf. <laughs> that should be the end of this. Your name is Corny, and your name is Homeless. <laughs> Welcome. You are now Vendigus. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to your life of indentured servitude. <laughs> but yeah, she's. She's studying like Latin and all kinds. Like she's got to keep to her studies. Yes. Now she, it's kind of weird these two's relationship because they make eye contact and they're kind of like, like if they were a little older, maybe they would have made this into a love story. The two of them. Oh, okay. Right? So, so here's here's the thing. And I told you there were parts of this movie I remembered. Yeah. I don't know if just as a little kid, maybe I was really into this little red haired girl. <laughs> this is all, the only parts of this movie I remember <laughs> is their relationship. When this, I watched, the, what are we, a half hour, 40 minutes into yeah. this movie? And I'm like, I've never seen this before. And then when she gives him food, I just felt like it was like the years ago just piled on top it. of me. And yeah. I was like, how many times have I seen this scene of him just 
eating food in the With snow the and coke, drinking yeah. coke. Uh -huh. I knew every beat that was going to happen during this particular scene. This was which your, is really weird. This is what you watch. If you, you you tuned out the rest, you're like, oh, the goodness of Santa and where he came from. I don't need to know. What's this homeless kid doing? How's he what, getting all that grub? What's the relationship between these two? <laughs> What's, what's this Romeo what's his and Juliet move? love story? What's here? his moves? I gotta know. He seems like an underdog in this situation. How does it he was pull it really, down? really weird. Yeah, because the moment she looked out the window at him, I was like, "This is the movie where she feeds that homeless <laughs> kid." I was like, "It was there," and I was like, "Oh, that's a Santa Claus movie." All right, okay. It is. Yeah, she sees him from uh, from her window. She sees him on the street first, and it's. I guess they've seen each other before. I don't know that they have at this it point. Feels so much like they have some sort of relationship yeah. before we meet them. Yeah, or like they again, like it's a love connection kind of thing. Because so they just the weird familiarity being like, yes. there's that homeless kid. I better make him a plate again. Yeah, I'm gonna bring him some. Well, because she eats. She's only live. She lives in this rich rich house, but. Right now, at least, we know that she only has this tutor, this older woman that sort of minds her loosely, goes to watch her shows, her stories, mm -hmm. for, um, and leaves her alone, which is how she can leave the plate of food out there for the little boy, for this homeless boy. Uh I also thought this was weird is that she calls him little boy, which yeah. is a strange thing for a kid of the same age to say. She's, like, yeah, yeah. Like my kids, if they see their friends or somebody outside that they go to school with, they're not like, see that little boy over there? Yeah, yeah he's in my grade. No. The fact that she opens the door and is like, little boy, <laughs> little boy, little boy, here's some food for you, little boy. I'm like, he might be older than you. Yeah, too. I think he is. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, she leaves in the food. We get to watch him eat this food. Mm -hmm. He's so happy. He burps with the Coke. Yep. She's so happy that she's fed him. Um, you had brought up Natty Game when we were just yeah, talking Yeah, because I did think it was a little girl at first. I was a hundred. Yeah. I was ready for some reveal where he takes off his cap yeah. and his luscious locks yes. fall down. Yes. Because you can't tell. I, no. The way he's dressed at that age. Boy or girl, like it really could yeah, be. Yeah, and he had longer hair. Yeah, until he introduces himself. Or no, maybe it's when you hear there is a certain when he meets Santa and he introduces himself as Santa, Joey. I was like, oh, yeah. it's a little boy. I thought he was a it's little like, homeless girl. My name's Joe, and I'm like, oh, from like the facts of yeah. life. Like you're just a girl. <laughs> you're still on it. <laughs> you go by Joe. You're like, That's all right, cool. all right, I get it. Um, did we we talked about the competition? We talked about the there's an assistant needed for Santa, but we didn't say how back at the at Santa's at the North Pole, um, there's a competition between two elves that sort of. We really don't get to see much of the competition because we just see Dudley Moore's end of what he's right. done. It's two elves up for the assistant position. Yeah, um, and it's funny too because when she's like, "Oh, you need an assistant," and she, Mrs. Claus, and this one elf are they are the chummiest chums ever because yeah, the elves does. like. I know one elf who's super, <laughs> who's going to be totally into this. And she's like, I know who you're thinking uh -huh. of. He practically jumps out of my uh -huh. mind. And I'm like, are they, I guess they're both talking about Dudley Moore, yeah, right? Because so. he's so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. But you're right in that it's a competition. And it's basically a competition between an elf who just wants to do things very traditionally. Mm -hmm. And Dudley Moore is this more progressive elf who's like, we got to we got to move with the times, people. Yeah, like, I've got inventions here to create. And he does. He, he makes this like like an assembly line to help make the toys. and it, Some even, sort of machine. Yes. Even though it sort of malfunctions during his tryouts, he still wins, right? I don't know how any of these toys are put together. Because <laughs> we, go, we go inside this machine and we see that at one point... The wheels on these bikes, like none of so the screws wonky. are going so in. They're wonky. all falling yeah. down. But he's got this. It's a fun reveal that Santa looks over at this one elf and he's like, hmm, look at all those toys you made. Those look really good. And then the camera pans over and Dudley Moore has this massive pile uh -huh. of toys. And he's like, all right, Dudley Moore, you got yeah, it. Here. The elves cheer. Like the two congratulate each other. Like, good job. That yeah. was great. But Dudley Moore is now in charge. Yes. Yes. We also, at this point, we're back with the homeless kid when yep. he's pressing his face against the McDonald's oh, window. Oh, drooling oh, at this the is people eating McDonald's. Gets... That's before yeah, this... he eats the, the food, because we see how hungry he is. But yeah, it's like an advertisement for McDonald's. There's yes, some nice product placement. Yeah. Has there been a more just like over-the-top 
promotion yeah. for Coca Cola and McDonald's. Uh-huh. This kid's practically licking the windows. And we really do just like hang on these people eating sandwiches for a really it, long it time. It is, and crunching on their nuggets and sipping on their sodas. But this is when Santa stops by. He sees um, a, a little boy from his sleigh. He's, it's Christmas night, and he's uh, warming himself by an outdoor fire, you know, like homeless kids do. And when Santa comes down and is like, hey, what's going What are you doing? He's pretty wisecracking, this Joe. He's got this kid is a I'm sassy I'm playing for the Yankees. Say- what does it look like I'm doing? Get out about- of here, you bum. I don't know. <laughs> That's what he tells him because Santa, the other Santa, he knows his bum. I don't know how you felt about this kid's performance, this leather-clad kid. But didn't okay. you feel like he was performing this as if it was a stage Oh, like as if he was on, yeah. at, uh, you know. This kid's projecting to the back yeah. row throughout this movie. Like yeah. this kid's delivering his lines as though there's He's a like, spotlight on him. I don't know, him. Santa. What are you doing here? I'm just yeah. a kid. <laughs> yeah. The this kid is not great. The little red haired girl. I didn't look him up. She she sort of retired from acting. She only did a couple things and then retired. Um, she's a lawyer now, yeah. uh, but yeah, they're not great no. and they're doing a lot of like, there's a lot put on this kid in this movie. Yeah. Like he's a main character in this movie now. Yeah. Yeah. He gets swooped in. Yeah. So Santa, he meets up with, or Santa swoops down to him and the kid's kind of a smart ass at first. It's almost like Santa's offended that this kid doesn't believe he's Santa. And he's like, oh Yeah. I'll show you. I'll take you for a ride of in the sleigh. Of course he is. Santa's like, what the hell? You're a kid. You're supposed to believe in Santa. Not realizing this poor Joe has lived a hard life, but Santa just makes his magic happen. It doesn't take long. So he doesn't even question. This kid's not like, how'd you do that? What the hell? He's like, well, I guess you must be Santa. You've got magic in a sleigh. <laughs> right. I also find it funny that Santa has never given this kid anything because the kid's like, I, well, I never believed in Santa before. And you know, he never gave me anything. Yeah. And I'm like, so Santa just works off of addresses. <laughs> is that what's happening here? And he's like, well, if you don't have a home, you don't well, get he never anything. Wrote him a letter. He never wrote him a letter. Maybe that's why. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I also found it funny how he's taking this kid for just a joy ride. It really is. Yeah. Cause he's like, Oh yeah, you can fly the sleigh. This is great. We have all night. It's no yeah, big deal. We got time. Don't worry. <laughs> right. This is just like, you know, so they can bring it back at the end. This idea of the kids like, so these reindeer can do anything. He's like, not anything. They haven't mastered oh, the, the super, super duper looper. looper. And my thought is, why do you care, Sid? Like, why are you trying to make them do this? It seems very dangerous. Yeah. And your you gifts could might lose fall your toys. Up. Yeah, that was my <laughs> thought. I'm like, the super duper looper is that's just for when you're fun and games at the North Pole when you're trying right. to just get some exercise like, out of the <laughs> reindeer. How about later? I don't mean to skip ahead, but later when the reindeer are sick and they take their temperature and it just says flu on the <laughs> Yep. It's pretty great. Um, but anyway, yeah, the kid... I do like how... Because that's another weird thing about this movie is that doesn't come into play at all. It's just kind of like... Well, we're down two reindeer. It's just so he can talk to his reindeer like he's the coach of a football team. <laughs> It's pretty great. It's really bizarre because it's not like they can't fly. They do the same stuff they've been doing. No, but now but they have to do it kind of back of to back. They had to, yeah, because two of them were out. Um, I but guess. yeah, they. So Santa takes him not just on the joyride. Now Santa's like, well, come on, come see what I do. And yeah. they go and they start delivering to some of these. They do some of Santa's deliveries. And they end up, he goes, we can't draw right all night. Like, I got shit to do, kid. So come on. Hey, you know what's a good idea? Why don't you come with me to all these great homes? Yeah. And it'll make you feel worse about exactly. your situation. Because Santa doesn't even know he's homeless at this point. But I expected when, they, when they're in, like, that super rich girl's house. And he finally tells Santa he's homeless. I expected Santa to be like, mm, oh, yeah. no, I uh, well, maybe I well, shouldn't have done this. And how shady is that? So they go, well, I do like it. Santa's like, yeah, let's have some. We get free cookies. Yeah. It's great. But yeah, when they're <laughs> yes. in the rich girl's house, because now they get, they appear at Cornelia's or whatever. Right. And they, it's like instant. He's like, oh, you guys, she's awake. And she sees Santa. And then she sees Joey. And she's like, you're here yeah. too? Santa's like, you guys know each other? Like, what's up? And then I love it. Santa finds out he's homeless. And they're like. All right, listen, I'm just going to leave you shady homeless kid here yeah. with the rich girl's yep. house. I'm going to go up and finish delivering presents. 
You eat a nice meal with your friend Cornelia. <laughs> And uh, I'll be back. Pick you up. See how things go. Yeah. Okay? It's not, it's you're fine. not going to get in any you trouble too. at all. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll see you next year. Have fun. Mm-hmm. The end. Yeah. It's it's so strange. It, it's just, this isn't the movie I wanted. Like, I was not into this movie at this point. But I was like, okay, fine. History of Santa Claus, fine. We're up to present day. He's got these kids. I was a little worried, though, when I looked at how much time is left in this movie. Because I'm like, Where are we oh, going? no, wait. And mind you, this movie's almost two hours long. We still haven't like, seen Lithgow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This was again the point of the movie where I was like, what is, is he, I saw his name, right? That was not a figment of my imagination. When does he come into play? You want to know? <clears throat> Don't worry. Just hold on tight. Yeah. Just hold on tight. Cause now we get Christmas morning where all these toys are breaking oh. and or being run over by school buses. Yeah. They're not made well. They're not, well, not the toys are breaking. Uh, it's literally kids are, first of all, there's these wooden toys. The kids are riding them down the street and the wheels are just coming off. Like you said, the one gets hit by a school bus. We also see that Cornelia's getting picked on in her dance class and starting oh a fight. And, and other random homeless street <laughs> toughs, I guess, are bullying yeah. this kid Joey's for believing in Santa. Up. Yep. So Dudley gets demoted. It's just this is when hard times fall on Santa Claus the movie. The kids get beat up. The toys are falling apart. They've gotten more returns and negative feedback, I guess, more poor reviews for this Christmas than any other before. And but I'm still <clears throat> holding out hope because I'm thinking, okay, this is the point in the movie where everything goes wrong. And you know what? In the next 15 to 20 minutes, all will be resolved. Wait, we have 45 minutes left in this movie? And we got another Hold twist. Now we're happen. doing Elf the movie, kind of. <laughs> where Yeah. So <laughs> Dudley Moore walks off like a sad elf. Dudley Moore, uh, how sad is it when he says goodbye to the deer, the reindeer? He, like, hugs the reindeer goodbye. Donner cries, and he's going to—he doesn't—he's not asked to leave, mind you. He decides on his own goodwill that he's going to go. I also do like it how Santa and the other elves, it's kind of like— well, that Christmas was a loss. Yeah. You know what? We'll make up for it next we year. We got a whole nother year to figure it out. We'll get it. We'll get it, guys. We'll get it. Because I like how the toys are suddenly somehow magically returned also. I think that's hilarious yeah. how all the toy parts just fall down the chimney yep. where the letters come from. So, yeah, once once the Christmas, the crappy Christmas has happened, then the movie shifts. And now we're in a courtroom. We're in a different movie mm-hmm. again. We are before the Senate subcommittee (laughs) where John Lithgow is getting grilled over these toys. There's a doll that just bursts into flames and a teddy bear that appears to be stuffed with sawdust and screws. Stuffed and glass and shards of glass. (laughs) I don't understand this. And his... I did think it was funny how he's very smug and how he's uh, responding to all of this. Almost like anyone, if you ever watch, like, what is it, C-SPAN? Uh-huh. And if you ever watch one of these where people are dragged before the Senate Committee, they all respond as smugly as he does oh, yeah. to all of this. Yeah. And I also found it, let's say, somewhat offensive that in this movie about Christmas mm-hmm. that his... I don't know if I want to call this guy his attorney. Oh, yeah. His money guy is like this, let's say, offensively nebbish Jew character. (laughs) This guy's like, oh, BZ, I don't know the money we're going to lose, BZ. I just don't know what you... You're giving them away for free? I don't Uh, think that's a good idea. I was like, this is terrible. Listen to you doing a little character. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's what this guy but that's sounds, what he sounds like. Anytime yeah. he was on screen, I was like, oh, no, he's going to talk about money again. Yeah, well, that's, he's <laughs> like, his accountant terrible. and his lawyer and his assistant. And Beezy, he's Beezy the Toy Man. He has a toy factory where he makes these terrible, dangerous toys for children. Um, but he's all about the profit. He, um, oh, in the meantime, <clears throat> our little elf, Dudley, is magically transported to the real world. He's just wow. here now. <laughs> Okay, so there is a chance that I look down at my notes for just a minute. Mm -hmm. How does he get to John Lithgow? What is the connecting? He goes and he's at a toy store and they're taking all the BZ toys off the shelves 
because they're dangerous. But Dudley whispers, well, they these must be great toys because look at how quickly they're leaving the shelves. Oh my God. Okay. That makes so yes. much more sense. Cause I assumed he was watching, you know, C-SPAN and saw <laughs> and this because the- at, at every moment I was ready for him to be like, well, I think you need my help because no. uh, I saw the way your toys, because that's the thing that I remembered as a kid is that Dudley Moore turned evil, which does not happen. No, he's no, just he's an kind the whole elf. time, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. But he somehow makes his way. Also, he just John sh- Lithgow was just in D.C. Also, yeah. like, he was just in D.C. So I thought this movie took place in D.C. for a while. I don't. We are in some city. I don't know what. We're city. in New York. We are in New York. Okay. Yeah. Um, Patch's goal is to prove to Santa what a good elf he is. By, I guess, embedding himself in the modern day toy making line Your and guess is make as a, good as mine. I don't get the thought. Listen, I'm because not an elf. Also, until he sees Dudley Moore on a commercial, I don't think Santa knew he was gone. Like, I don't no. think he even no, knew he they was do. gone. No, because before he gets into the city, they they or they before we see Dudley in the city, we see they realize that Dudley's oh, gone, okay. and okay. Santa I goes, "That's a big that. city for a little elf." And that's when I'm like, "What is this elf? The movie now? We're gonna see right. like Dudley adjusting to." Because We're he gonna does. see him pick gum off of a subway or whatever. Yeah, and start it. chewing yeah. it and put yeah. syrup on his spaghetti. But he does appear in um, BZ's office and Lithgow's office, and he's in his chair. He's in his chair, and I like how the secretary's like, "I told him not to go," and I'm like, "He's so little. <laughs> what, what's, what's going you on?" Know? Well, and I love it. He's in his chair. He turns around, and Lithgow's like, "Who?" you and Liskell's performance is is, it is odd but it's wonderful over, it is so over the top in a movie it's <laughs> wonderful, most though. over the top performance is a guy named Santa Claus and even he is reserved and believable suddenly we meet cartoonish <laughs> villain like he is a cartoon it's character it's wonderful though I John loved it Lithgow. I loved I, it I, I, I think this is where you and I diverge oh, because okay. I thought his performance is so over the top. Like it doesn't belong in this movie at all. I thought it was I thought it was fun. I I it okay. did shift all the right. movie, but his character doesn't belong in this movie. Like you said, this is a different movie now that takes place from learning about how Santa Claus got his his start right. to now learning about the the underworkings of greedy toy makers, you know. I also but, like how for centuries there have apparently been no issues whatsoever. No, no and suddenly one to, Christmas yeah. is the worst thing that's ever See happened. See what happens when you call for assistant? You just got to do this shit yourself, Santa. That's how it gets done. But I love it. So Dudley tells him, I'm an elf. And Lithgow goes, like a fairy? Like, <laughs> yes. he doesn't quite understand. And uh, Dudley just kind of says, like, you know, you have a toy factory. I want to use your factory because I want to impress Santa. And I love it. It doesn't take, just like it didn't take Joey the homeless kid that much convincing, it only takes a little bit of like, I don't know. I don't believe in elves. What do you mean? And then all of a sudden he's like, all right, great. You're an elf. Fine. Yeah, it's I like, believe. oh, you're an elf? Santa, that dude? Sure. Whatever. Got it. Oh, you're magical. Fantastic. The, so the whole plan, and I do kind of like how Dudley Moore has this plan, which is to make a toy that every kid is going to want yep. and also every kid's going to get and it doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. And John Lithgow, first of all, flies off the handle when he goes free. <laughs> but then it. even John Lithgow is just like, oh, yeah, I can totally make this work for me. Like well, I can 100% yeah. make this free <clears throat> item work because then – Everyone will want more, and right. then we can sell them and jack up the price. Like it makes total sense. They don't but discuss the item, and and no, Dudley I was never shocked says, by what the me item too. was. <laughs> me too. Dudley doesn't even say, so I'm going to add a little magic to the item. It's just the the sell is well, it's it'll be a free yes. toy that I know a how to make because I'm an elf. Don't call candy a toy. Also, like yeah. that's my a problem. lollipop is not a toy, even yes. if it makes you float around your house. It's not a toy. Right. <laughs> and that's the thing. is In this commercial, it's like, everybody's going to want this toy. It's the greatest toy. It's the greatest toy. I, I assume all these kids are it's like, a what the sucker. fuck is this? It's a sucker what is, is what it is. Yes. 
I like Dudley Moore's idea how he's like, you know what? We're going to give it away for free. And also, what I want you to do is I want to make a commercial that airs on every channel. Yeah. In every country around the entire world. And John Lithgow's like, sounds great. Let's do well, that. He, by first, he gets like, that's going to be expensive, every country, everywhere. But then he sees his PR opportunity, and he gives Dudley this sad factory. And then the, I do love this line. I just wrote it down just because it's adorable. When Dudley <laughs> looks at Lithgow, oh, he this says, is so great. if you give extra kisses, you get bigger hugs. Is that the one that's <laughs> You give extra kisses, you get bigger hugs. <laughs> Mrs. Claus says that. And Mrs. Mrs. Claus <laughs> says that. And by this point, John Lithgow's on board, and he's like, mm-hmm, sounds great. Yep, Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Claus, fantastic. Great. Maybe you but, can leave my office now. Right. Now we get we, this weird... <laughs> well, he also sees that... That he can fire everyone too, because he walks through his factory and he's like, "Look at this, no unions, no people." Oh this yeah, because the just the one elf. He says, "I'm gonna." He, yeah, because he Jen Lithgow says, "Like, how many men do you need? What's this gonna cost me?" And he's like, "Nobody, just me. I can do it all. Oh, not a problem." It's like short circuit when the robots like. I can do it. <laughs> Johnny Five can come in and do it all. It's like Patch the Elf can come in and do it all. Don't worry, in half the time. And yeah, John Lithgow thinks this is great. He doesn't have to pay all of his workers. He doesn't have to... The overhead's a lot less. Dudley Moore makes a sleigh, like a rocket-powered oh, sleigh. Oh, yeah. We like don't a... need... Somehow it flies. Not sure. I mean, it's it's everything's full of magic, so it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. But I guess he needs to make this sleigh to then deliver the toys. Because he's going to deliver these toys. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. The yeah. commercial? Yes, this that's commercial? what I was getting to next. Yeah, Patch is in a sparkly outfit. There's dancing ladies behind him. Um, and even he's like, I don't know if this is going to work. And they'll. And John Lithgow's like, believe me, all this glitz and glamour, we need it. And it's yep. it's lit up like a 70s variety show's Christmas special. It is really it is. is. Yeah. Yes, everyone is in matching glittery outfits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like how Santa's watching this in the North Pole. Yes. That was the thing where I was like, Oh, he gets TV up there? The same. I wonder, like, uh, why didn't we see that in a montage? Like an elf installing a TV being like, yeah, this is going to be the big yeah. thing, Santa. This is how we're going to, yeah. So the commercial comes on and Santa's like, oh, what is, and now Santa, Santa gets a little, a bit in the, in the blues. He gets a little sad and this is the start of the sadness. Well, the breaking of the toys kind of set him off. And oh, now there's all sorts of like, stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, this he had is to like fire his elf, but now yeah. this is happening. Bring in the, the blues. Toys all broke. Mm-hmm. Oh, ugh. and there's only like 300 days till Christmas or right. whatever. And how are we going to figure this out? This um, is also where a hilariously dumb reveal is made. Oh, where, where we find the, out who. This red haired girl's aunt is like you need to go show your uncle your report card or whatever she tells her i don't know Mm -hmm. and so she walks into this office and he turns around as though he's a james bond villain (laughs) and she's james bond like (laughs) the fact that he's smoking a cigar and laughing at her i'm saying what is this and he goes for those cigars man when he when lithgow goes for each of those cigars i'm like easy it's like he is (laughs) eating them (laughs) He's so <laughs> puffing on it's. It's such a weird. It's such a God, weird unhinged yeah. and like unrestrained performance. Like I, I can only imagine that like Nick Cage watched this and was like, I could probably do this in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably how I should play something at some point. I'm gonna put this in the collection. It was his of motivation. Unhinged yeah. nonsense performances that I'm gonna emulate at some yeah, point. Yeah. So a whole year. It's been a year. It's been a has year gone since. by. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and we see Santa and Patch are flying around like simultaneously. Oh yeah, Patch delivering toys. Shoots out. By the way, you said he's got his fancy little sleigh that he makes up with these little drummer boy. It looks like a car sleigh kind of thing oh the and drummer he, boys that turned the headlights yes yes <laughs> sure why not he, he shoots out of just like it's not as climatic as like when santa goes on his first ride and we didn't talk to that but it was amazing when he finally does go and fly for the f- first time dudley on his sleigh shoots out of the factory to go deliver his toy while santa's delivering his Santa meets back up with um, with Joey on the rooftop, right. and I love Joey's like, I'm your pal for life. We're never not friends. And that's when Santa gives him his BFF wooden 
elf creature toy. I did think it was funny how Santa looks down and sees Joey on a rooftop and is like, well, someone cares about me still. And I was like, yeah. you don't know that that's Joey, do you? You yeah. just think it's a random kid. <laughs> like, you forgot about this kid. It's been a year, I understand. And Joey and looks does, exactly the same in the past yeah. year. No he does changes. hand him that carving, that whittled yeah. carving. Yeah. The Joey is... Um, I think he's just being polite, right? Like, the, like, wow, look at this that you're well, giving me. Well, he pulls me. it out of his pocket later when he shows it to Patch. He's like, well, yes, I'm Santa's best friend. Look, he gave me one of these. <laughs> I don't think everyone gets one of these. I expected Dudley to be like, yeah, every elf gets one, dude. Yeah. He does one of every elf. We all Finally, have he made one of me. Yeah. I was his assistant for a year, and he didn't make one of me. Nobody gave one to you. He um, gave it away. As we he said, gave it away to a homeless kid? Yeah. That should be more insulting than anything <laughs> Santa's done to you. Let's talk about this quote-unquote toy, because we've been talking about it already. Yep. We see that the red-haired girl, for some reason, it's like she's got... Oh, she doesn't want the toy. Yeah. No, yeah. she's got a horse in this race or a dog in this fight, and she's like... Uh uh-uh. uh, if it doesn't come from Santa, I don't want it. I'm not having it. Mm-hmm. So her aunt's like, you know what? I'm gonna eat this free candy. Sure, why not? Yeah. And she eats it. It's not even like I was confused about what consistency this is too, because it seems to almost be gummy. Like they could just bite chunks like a off tootsie of it. roll or something. Yes. <laughs> but then she floats around. Yes, and, and then we, we see, see other kids float around. <laughs> Also, the look of this red-haired girl after her aunt starts floating is kind of like, oh, man, I probably shouldn't have passed that up. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. That actually looks like fun. I do like the mom that sees the kid floating and he takes a cookie out of the cookie jar that's hidden up high. <laughs> um, no one's reaction is what it should be, which is terror from watching hell? kids float. Yeah, from the watching them float around. Just <clears throat> holding her kid's hand and her kid floats up and yeah. she looks back like, no, that's silly That fun little toys. toy. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a press conference for the BZ toys, right? Because they're like... Yep. And the press conference doesn't last long because BZ hurries... Because the questions start focusing on who is this toy maker and then what of the lawsuit about the other toys right the questions come fast and furious for yes. a while and yes. all about like who's this weird little elf yeah. that's sitting next to you yeah. and he's like I got him locked up on like a five year deal it's so great yeah. we're gonna work yeah. out the details later and then somebody's like hey how'd that whole senate thing go and he's like alright get out we're done yeah we're done we're moving along and then what is the deal with Christmas too with Gal seeing big money and seeing how well we'll just do Christmas again in March March. We won't Christmas, even wait. I like how Christmas 2 isn't six months. It's no, three months no. later. And he delivers it as though it is something that should be in the trailer of this movie. I am yeah. I am very interested to see if this was the trailer of the movie. Because he looks directly at the camera, says Christmas 2, holds up two fingers uh-huh. right to the camera. And is so excited about this. Mm-hmm. And even Patch, Dudley Moore, is like, I don't know about this. Oh, I just have to make you one more toy, and then you'll set me free from yeah. this life. Yeah, because he's ready now. He goes, "This is what I did. I did. this will impress Santa. Yeah. That people love it, right. and that was my point. And now I want to go back to North Pole." And also, Santa is insanely easily defeated at this point. Oh, yeah, at this yeah. point, we he's do flash Santa up. in the North Pole, sitting back, being like. You know what, guys? We had a great run, but I guess yeah, this is Yeah, exactly. Over. I guess this is it. The world's okay. just a terrible place. I mean, the kids are homeless. Did you know about homeless kids? Yeah. They're homeless, and I know one, and he's... Yeah. I expected him to be like, why didn't any of you think of making lollipops that could make kids yeah. fly? Like, yeah. we all have this power. Why, yeah, why did it take this to have him harness it? Um, yeah, Santa, S- sad Santa is just oh, and then I love it. Santa asks like, "Well, what do we got? All right, if if we're gonna go back out there, what do we got?" And the elves are like, "We have a doll that wets." Yeah, we have a doll that pisses herself. And I looked at that doll and I was like, "This looks like shit. Like this yeah. looks like something and well, that's that was what made." Santa said too. That's You've why been Santa making was like, the same it. doll for thousands of yeah. years. Like it doesn't look like a Barbie or anything no. like that. It still looks like it was sewn by the hands of elves, yeah, and that's, that's not what kids want. And that's not uh, not these they modern want, kids. They don't want wooden tricycles either. No, that you're gonna fall apart. Yeah. Um, so P.S. Joey does not yet make it back to the North Pole. He goes to visit um, Cornelia. Yes. And she it's pouring rain and he's got a bit of a cold. We know this because he says, 
A chew. <laughs> yep, a chew. And the fact that she has to act like a mother at this point. Yeah, to she this takes kid. his temperature. She's like, "Oh no, you're really sick." He's like, "I'm fine. I'm a kid of the streets. I'll be." She insists that he stays with her and that he's going to stay in her really creepy basement. Like for a really nice house, it's a totally creepy basement. Really um, creepy basement. And also, I understand that these are kids, but. I kind of was ready for her to be like, now let's get you out of those wet clothes. Like, yeah. it was such a bizarre, <laughs> like, the fact that she takes his temperature is like, 99? Oh, my God. I'm like, 99? That's not a fever. What are you doing to this poor kid? But he just she, wants to live on the streets. He just, yeah, he, yeah, fever is not, but whatever. So she she takes him now. She's going to hide him in the basement. And first I'm like, what the hell is this all about? And whatever. Now, uh, her uncle comes back to the house and he's ready to celebrate. Yeah, this is weird. This with is, the Paps this is Blue weird. Ribbon. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did think that was funny. I don't know why that struck me as so funny, because he has these big cognac glasses. Yes. And his attorney's there like, no, I don't know about this. And he's like, oh, we'll be living the good life. And he opens <laughs> cans of PBR and pours just a little bit in there and like swirls, swirls it. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. It is pretty great. Uh -huh. Also, you know what I'm never giving my kids if they see them? Glowing red candy canes because that seems oh, really deadly. Bad news. Well, how about and we the... see that that's what he's making. That's what yes. Patch is making because he's like, hey, what would happen if we just like up the dose of super magical stardust? Oh, right, right. It's like, well, kids would fly away. He's like, you know what? That's what I want. That's what you need. That's the product I want to sell. Exactly. Well, Beezy's not known for making good decisions for his kids' toys, right? No. But he's excited. He's ready to celebrate. Um, he's at his home um, that he shares with his niece, and there is a sneeze that comes from the basement, and these two are on it. They're like, where's that coming? Now, there's a little girl that lives there. That there's a little sneezed. girl. There's a tutor that lives there. Right. There's apparently your wife. Don't know. I guess that's who that woman is. There's multiple people that live in this home. Right. And also, it seems like the basement backs up to the kitchen, which yeah. doesn't make a whole lot no, of sense either. And is the cabinet like a secret passage? Because at one point, the girl appears to be in the cabinet <laughs> listening to them. <laughs> She does seem like that, yeah. It's oh, yeah, because really... they overhear how they want yes. to celebrate ruining Santa, becoming Santa. That's what they're celebrating is they're taking down Santa. That's what I find is funny because I was like, has John Lithgow always had a vendetta against Santa? It doesn't appear that he even knew Santa existed no. until... A month ago at this point in the movie, maybe. And now we all know Santa does what he does for free. It's not a money-making job. But no. he's... And I like the full circle plan is that we're going to do this second toy that Dudley's making, and it's going to be great. And even, like you said, the ner the lawyer is nervous. He's like, I don't know. We're going to... These are kids, and we're making them fly, and we don't know what that's going to do. Right. And... The big plan is, well, that's okay. We're going to, after it's all said and done, we're going to move to Brazil and live on the beach. And yes. We'll like, frame the elf. The elf will get all the <laughs> slack for making we'll this. We'll make a ton of money, murder hundreds of children, I right. assume, mm -hmm. in the end. It is so bizarre. But also I think it's kind of funny to think of it as being like, okay, this is a world in which toy executives are like, you know what? We're doing great. 11 months out of the year. But you know what? Santa's totally fucking us on Christmas. <laughs> like, he's giving shit away for free? We cannot compete with that. So in that sense, it's kind of funny if you think of it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, Oh, he's like, finally, I can take out Santa and I can sell toys all year long. All now. year long, right. And retire in Brazil at the end <laughs> of it. Brazil. Yeah. Very specific. I expect his lawyer to be like, we have to take your niece with us. <laughs> all of this happens and John Lithgow... He finds this kid. He catches this leather-clad kid in his basement. Well, yeah, he sneezes, and he's got to get on yeah. it. And... and John Lithgow, it seems, worried that this kid's going to rat him out yeah, to he's Santa I know, Yeah, he's like, you're a snitch, and now i got to take care of you. And literally some goonies come 
take Joey away. Where did and- these goons come from? Because I was like, oh my God, these guys are going to murder this no. child. They just for take some him reason. and then they tie him up to a boiler, basically, in the back of the factory. Yeah. It's kind of just like, I'll be back for you later, kid, to cut your throat or whatever. Yeah, to we're murder do you and you. keep your mouth shut. Luckily, Dudley Moore, after his work, also, he sleeps in like the back of the sleigh. That he built, yes. which has almost like a roll top thing that like closes down on his neck, which seems very dangerous. <laughs> but he wanders off into the boiler room of this factory and finds this kid. Well, that's he keeps the magic that he puts in these candies in like the top filing drawer of this cabinet. Right. And when he goes back there to get the magic, he oh, hears okay. this kid kind of mumble and shift around. And he's again, he's not mean. He's like, What are you doing here? Oh my goodness. And this is when he reveals the toy in his pocket and that he's or Joey does and says you know I'm like Santa's best friend and Joey's mad at this elf is like what are you trying to do and Dudley confesses like I'm not trying to ruin Santa I want to get in his good graces I used to you're his best friend I was his assistant um, in the meantime we didn't mention that this little red haired girl she writes a letter a to letter. Santa yes. like outlining everything we know in this movie and I like how when the letter comes in it's like Oh, geez, it's only been a month since Christmas. Like, can't these kids hold their horses for a little bit? Yeah, yeah. But this is when he finds out that he's got to go and he's got to handle his, his Joey. business. He's like, my Joey's in danger. We got to end the... <laughs> The like kid. Joe's in danger. And that's when he gives the reindeer a pet dog. And he's like, let's do it for Joe. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We got we to gotta get on that field and we got to fly. We got to do the super duper looper if Joe wants us to. So let's two of the two, as we mentioned earlier, two of the reindeer have caught the flu. Mm-hmm. Um, but Santa goes, he picks up Cornelia first who fills him in on all the what's happening him up to speed. <clears throat> Joe's been kidnapped and we got to go find him. And then this movie kind of wraps up really quickly. This, this movie, okay. Uh, here's the other thing I forgot to mention. Um, I had to buy this movie twice. Why? <laughs> I had to rent this movie twice because I rented it, and you know how you get 48 hours. Oh, you didn't finish it in the first. 48. I got to this point in the movie, oh and my I had gosh. to stop. And then, literally. 49 hours later, I went on. I was like, oh, no. And oh, I had to bummer. Run it a second time. You could have just stopped I was and I could have so told mad. you. Well, yes. were, were you really? Because isn't it fun to. <laughs> Isn't it what? fun to watch Lithgow just stuff a bunch of candy canes in his mouth and run that to the window so and be weird. like, Because oh, at this point, I, mean, I was like, I paid why is he being for arrested? That. Why are the police there? It doesn't make any sense. Well, because Cornelia mentioned how she called the police, but they weren't taking it seriously. That was part of her wrap up to but Santa. what did she tell the police? I that don't he know. kidnapped a homeless child? And that he put crazy shit in the in the candy that the kids are getting. Yeah, yeah I so, don't know why he's being. Re- yeah, this movie, <laughs> the a movie come. that is overstuffed and overlong and nearly two hours. It's like they're like, oh shit, we gotta we finish gotta wrap this it up. in a yeah. certain amount of time. <laughs> so we got a, a deadline sudden, ahead of us. We have um, we we see. Um, we see Lithgow in his office, and he's like, you guys will never get me. He's got a drawer full of these magical glowing candy canes. He stuffs them in his mouth like a like a lunatic, and then he just takes off out the window and starts floating into the sky. She jumps out the window and floats away. I was like, well, I guess we that's the later. end of him. We see him later, and he's just floating when in space. When we see him in space? And I was like, what is this movie? <laughs> this is so crazy. So great. Also... Also, <laughs> Dudley Moore and the homeless kid oh, they... are in Dudley Moore's sleigh, mm-hmm. packed with these. <laughs> oh, did we even say that these things are going oh, to yeah, explode? They, that was the other thing. Yeah, is that they could, if they're on the, we didn't say it, but if they, if they're near heat, they can explode. I think that was one of the lawyer's worries when they came to the house. He's like, "But this is going to kill people," and he's like, "Who cares? We're going to be in oh, Brazil. Oh, easy, they're going <laughs> to yeah. kill people." So. Also, what are they doing with these? Like, what are they going to do with these? Well, their plan, I think, was to bring them back to Santa. That's what the, the Joey and the... Bring the evidence uh, back to Santa. I guess, okay. or just get them out of Beezy's All hands. Right. So they stuff them in the sleigh, but as they're flying around and Santa and Cornelia are trying to catch up with Joey and, and Dudley, um, the heat from Dudley's sled is heating up the... 
the, there's sparks. the candy canes. Yeah, yes. there's sparks and all sorts of stuff. And here's what I don't understand about this whole rescue routine. Santa is underneath them. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. underneath them. Yeah. And then he says, we have to do the super duper looper to be underneath them, I guess. Because <laughs> he loops all the way around, gets their attention, and they're able to, I guess, jump into his sleigh, and then yeah. theirs explodes. Saves the day. Saves the Just timing is just right. And it really is wild because suddenly... It's so, kind of like the end of the movie. Everybody's back yeah. at the North Pole. Mm -hmm. The elves are all celebrating. Mm -hmm. Dudley Moore's a hero? Question mark. Maybe I think, don't I think, know. Yeah, he saved himself. Yeah, yeah. Santa's adopted two children. Yep, and they're all dancing. Mrs. Claus is excited to have these kids here because they're like, yeah, the kids are like, can we stay? She's like, listen, my uncle's horrible. Now he's floating somewhere. I don't know that yeah. I've got really. I guess that's the thing. Who does she have to go back to? And Joey, we know, has got nothing. So. They're going to stay right. at least the year. I think, they, obviously, they make a oh, living out of staying. Like I said, forever. I think that they, he becomes the next Santa. But yeah. um, And I like yeah. how the one elf is like, I guess I'm your teacher now. Like, yeah. What are you going to teach them? What do you know that's going to... I guess you're going to teach them elf lore yes. and toy making. Yes. And that's, that's what they're going to learn. That's what these kids will know. That's all they'll need to know. They wow. live at the North Pole now. And that's that's... Santa Claus. The, oh, wait, then we have Lithgow floating in space. Floating in space. Like a, like a credit end credit sequence yes. of him floating around in space. N not overly concerned about floating in space no. either. He's a little angry about it. He's he like, seems how do upset. I get out of here? Yeah. yeah, he seems upset that he's probably going to die. Like, I don't know how he made it through the Earth's atmosphere, but yeah. Oh, that's Santa Claus the movie. I, 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 I feel like our feelings on this probably came out as we talked about it yeah. but what would you say i loved it i thought it was great wow. i think that it definitely took a turn and it definitely has some holes and gaps and some like what but the whole first part that whole first half hour is what sold me the magic of christmas and this man and his wife and the toy maker who becomes santa and i think dudley moore did a great job you did not like lithgow's performance no. i thought it, the performances i disliked the most were the kids and oh, you yeah, really sure. can't get that angry at a kid's performance because they're just kids i didn't love the plot twist and like you mentioned with the different storylines and there's yeah. too many of that i could agree to that and see that but having Again, I don't know that I saw this movie as a kid. Maybe I did, and like you said, mentioned earlier, maybe it was forgettable to me as a kid. Um, as an adult watching it now, I really liked it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't like it at all. I really Not didn't. Not at all? Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, like I said, if, if the movie was the origin of Santa and then suddenly like an evil toy maker like lures one of the elves away, like that's a movie and I'd be okay with it, but it's just over stuff like there's too, too much. much stuff in here yeah. this should not be a movie that's what an hour 45 an hour 50 yeah. like yeah. Th it shouldn't be this long i no i was done i was out i was bored i didn't care yeah you, by the, you yeah you had to, by the time had john twice. lithgow came on screen i was like well he's in a different movie and i don't want to watch this oh movie, so. see i was i was yeah. so into that first half that when it took the turn i wasn't I liked, sure. I preferred the first movie I was watching, but I was still on board because <laughs> it was still goofy fun and yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. Great. I like the ones where we disagree. That's Me fun. too. Me too. It shows yeah. that we're, Listeners, yeah. you can make your decision right. by watching this movie yes. if you want to. So did, do you have any recommendations? Any, I don't want to say holiday. They don't have to be holiday films, but it is Christmas when people are listening to this. I so did think about I So it, oh, I'm going to go ahead and recommend two then because I'm going to recommend oh, my favorite holiday movie, which is an easy. And then I'm going to recommend a movie that actually has Dudley Moore and Burgess Moore, Meredith in it. <clears throat> Whoa, Rocky three. Yeah, no, no. I want him to be in Rocky so, three. <laughs> I know you did, didn't you? So the movie that I'll just, uh, mention the latter first. The movie from mm -hmm. 1978, Foul Play, with Goldie okay. Hawn and yeah. Chevy Chase and Dudley's in it and Burgess is in it and a dwarf and an albino and the assassination of... It's a wild, crazy movie. It's, it's been years fun. since I saw it, but it's super fun and crazy yeah. and all those actors were in it. So that was like a recommendation off of who was in this. If I had to think about my favorite Christmas movie, when you didn't know if you found this movie, if you, you when you were like, I don't know, we might have to watch this other shitty movie. 
<laughs> from the <laughs> 80s. That's for Christmas. I looked fast, and I, my one of my favorite Christmas movies from the 80s, I didn't realize it was in the 80s. I thought it was 90s. I, my favorite Christmas movie, one of my favorites, is Scrooged. Oh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. That it would be. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. I remember... I remember liking it, but it's one of those where so many people really love it, and I don't, not that I don't understand why, but I didn't get that from it when yeah. I saw it, but it really has been a long time. And it's a movie I only saw maybe once. No? Well, so that's I've seen it a lot, and I like it. I mean, I'm a big, I like a Bill Murray, and then we all know yeah. Bobcat is in there, and I enjoy him. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's my favorite, one of my favorite Christmas, one of my top favorite Christmas movies is Scrooge. Who plays the, who plays the fairy that, like, Oh, what's her name? Lot. She's so great. Ugh. That's 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 the part I, I remember yeah. more than anything other than the homeless guy freezing. For yeah, some reason, I remember that underneath a lot the too. in the sewers. Yeah, it's very Maybe sad. Maybe I need to watch that again. I feel like with Christmas movies, like there are certain movies that people just watch every year. Yes, but it's not everything. Like the same people that watch Home Alone every year like right. i do right probably don't watch scrooged or don't yes watch, yeah you know um, like my brother watches the a christmas story that's like his right. movie yeah. and and there's the, the vacation the the yeah. national lampoon's vacation and those are his like this is what i yes. watch yeah and there are um, some people who watch it's a wonderful life right. every year my and, other brother is the wonderful life yeah. yeah yeah but i feel like it's one of those things where you can't do more than two no yeah like, yeah and you gotta yeah. know so what's yours what's your it's, every year so here's here's the the thing and I don't know why I'm recommending I don't want to say that this is a recommendation but I watched it recently and it's enough of an oddity mm. to talk about fair enough so I I legitimately enjoy the movie Silent Night Deadly Night which oh. is a Christmas horror movie or mm -hmm. Christmas slasher movie murder movie and I legitimately think it's creepy and it's got some crazy kills and it's like unsettling mm -hmm. I always heard that I should watch Silent Night Deadly Night 2 because oh. it's one of those so bad it's good movies and it's from the 80s so I thought eh, at some point maybe we'll watch it but I was like you know what I'll just watch it and I did and the first half of the movie it's just clips from Silent Night, Deadly Night. Like it is oh. so, it's a guy who appears to be in a mental hospital because he survived Who's retelling the events. The story. Yes, he survived the events <laughs> of the first movie when he was a baby and a child, and it's just these snippets from the movie. And he's like, and that's when this happened. And then we watch like a long five to ten minute section of, of the, the first movie? movie. Oh, nice. And then the second half of the movie, he escapes from the mental institution and then just randomly starts killing people. It's so horrible, but I just, it's something where, <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but I feel like if you haven't seen Silent Night, Deadly Night 1, you could watch the second one and at the end be, be like, I saw both pleased. of those movies. All right. <laughs> like, it's so bizarre and I just couldn't not talk about it for this. Fair so enough. that's my recommendation. Okay. Okay. Don't know. All right. But everybody, we will have, we will kick off 2021 Ooh. next time you talk to us. And uh, Jamie, I went back. I was just curious. I'm not saying that we are responsible at all for anything that happened in 2020. Nothing mm -hmm. at all. Like mm -hmm. we're not, listen, we did not create some sort of virus in this our little laboratory no. or anything like that. We don't want anybody being upset that we may have forced you into a lockdown, but I looked at what we kicked 2020 off with. Oh. It was star 80. Oh. <laughs> that was the We did first start it pretty grim. We, we should did. have known. Yeah. We should have seen the writing on the oh, wall. Oh, yeah. I am hoping. Oh, yeah. It's like America got better. like, it's it's like, yeah, it's like Eric Roberts came in on, on the beautiful <laughs> bunny that was America and was like. Beautiful bunny. <laughs> wasn't she a Playboy bunny? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. He brought right. that bench with him. <laughs> Whatever that was, he brought that, it with him. That movie was so terrible. Oh, <laughs> that sex bench. That oh. neither of us can figure out how it worked. <laughs> we tried so hard. So, so what? How are we starting our twenty twenty? We're actually going with a listener-supported film. 
Mm-hmm. Remember, folks, uh, it, on Patreon, if you want to up your donation or pledge $15, you get to choose a movie for us to watch. And that's what we have. Laura, host of the Fatal Femmes podcast, which I've been on, mm-hmm. not to brag, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. She wants us to watch the notoriously bad movie, oh. Ishtar, starring Warren Beatty, Dustin Hoffman, uh-huh. Isabella Johnny. Like, this is a movie that bombed so badly but just because I think people thought it was supposed to be something great so let's say you know 30 years out maybe it'll be a lot better than it was at the time but this was like a money this was a movie that had a ton of money behind it and like nobody saw it all right all right we're gonna see it yeah so we're gonna watch Ishtar we're gonna talk about that and we will talk about that in two weeks until then have a great two weeks, everyone. Merry Christmas. Where's my bells? Jingle, jingle. Jingle, jingle. Jingle, jingle. jingle, jingle. Noises I dump in later, but forget to. <laughs> Christmas too. Mary, what are we? Six days till Christmas? Yeah. Seven? No, we're six. six. It's five, I think. Five. Isn't it on Friday? Right. I can't count. Six. It's six. Is it five? It's six. <laughs> <laughs>